when you start self-hosting, you start getting a lot of services. And when you start getting a lot of services, you might find you try to deploy a service and it comes up with that great message that that port is already in use. Now, that brings us to today's service that we're going to be covering, which is called DocPeak. Now, DocPeak was recommended to me via uh, the community in the Discord. A link is in the description. So via a community member and a friend um, that got this all set up, I checked it out and I thought this was really great. So what this allows us to do is get a single pane of view of all of the containers that are running on our host. Now, the great thing here is we can actually see more than just the one host. We can add as many hosts as we want. When I say host, I mean servers. So if I click all, I can see both of my hosts. So I've got Electron Cloud, which is one host, and then I've got Sandbox, which is another server itself running its own set of Docker containers. So again, that single pane of view, which is what we want. We love that. And I'm going to show you how you can get this all set up. But like I like to do first is I like to just explain what it is so you can get a feel for it and then I'll show you the install. Now, I just wanna make a quick note. If you are using something like Portainer, you already have this, so you probably don't really need to go ahead and install DocPeak, because in Portainer, you can already see the containers you're running. You can already see the ports that have published, uh, the image and all of that stuff. Where DocPeak itself is just giving you that view. You can't do any deployments via DocPeak. It's just that single pane of glass view of ports and essentially just the containers that are running on the host. So if you're doing deployments locally and stuff like this, this is for you. If you're already using Portainer, just stick with Portainer. It's already giving you that data that uh, DocPeak's gonna give you. It's actually pretty straightforward with what we're looking at here, right? So if I click all, I can see all the containers. Now, first off, of course, we can see the container name. This is the actual container name that we've named that container running on the host, where it's running, any ports. So you can see that this was actually defined uh, without any ports, so no ports are exposed for this uh, container. And then we've got the image that it's using. We can see that it's using the Postgres latest and we can see the status of it. So all of the containers that I have, they're all running. Now, let's say uh, I want to go um, to a service. We can actually do that by clicking the port. So 8111, if I click this, it takes us to the Nginx. And I'm sorry for everyone that I just blinded. <laughs> a bit of a flashbang there. But again, if you're using Portainer, you also get that. You can click on the publish ports and it's gonna take you to that as well. This isn't a comparison between Portainer or DocPeak. They're completely different. Um, I just, I'm just, the reason I keep going to that is that if you're using Portainer, just, just stick with it. You don't need to ditch things, right? So another great thing is if you're looking for a specific con container, you're not sure what host it's on because you know you've been playing around or you've got so many hosts, we can just type something in. Okay, I know that I'm running Nginx. I've got a certain Nginx. Okay, these are the Nginx containers that I have up and running. Um, okay, it was, you know, this one. Oh, okay, that's on Sandbox. Cool, I can, you know, go on to the Sandbox and I can sort that out. Again, we can't manage the containers through here. It's just giving you that overview. That's the same for any ports. So, okay, what's running on port 9000? Ah, okay, Authentic's running on port 9000, okay? Uh, or if you're looking for a specific image, again, like Postgres, we can type in something like Postgres and we can see all of our Postgres containers and where they're running on what host. And of course, now, sorry, I'm about to flashbang everyone. Oh, you can change light mode. Uh, I don't know why anyone would use light mode. <laughs> uh, it's so bright. You can refresh as well, so we can get you know an updated status of our containers. And you can also export this. So if we export it, it's going to export it as a JSON file. So I don't know, maybe you want to run some, I don't know what you're going to do with the JSON. You might add it to some uh, monitoring or whatever you're doing. You can export this as a JSON file as well. So that's enough talking. Let me go ahead and explain to you how you can get this all set up and running. So as always, this I show the actual creator's GitHub and where you can find this, but then I'm going to also have my own documentation on uh, docs.techdocs.nz. A link to that will be in the description and that will have my compose file that I've used and you can just edit it as you want. Otherwise you can use the instructions and everything that's on the official GitHub. So if we look at this and we just scroll down, you can see, you know, they've got the examples, I've got the screenshots. So there's pretty much two ways you can go about doing this. If you're just going to run this locally, you don't have any other hosts, you can just run this simple compose here. But if you're wanting to run multiple hosts, um, even if I, I would say that even if you're just running one, but maybe you intend to run two at some point, deploy the this one here option two which is using a socket proxy which exposes your docker socket so that docpeak can connect to it and then see what 
containers are running. So that's how um, DocPeak can see the containers you have running because you're exposing the Docker socket and then DocPeak can then connect to that socket and then see the containers. Now, we're not exposing, we're not able to make any changes or anything like this. This is all read only. We're just reading the Docker socket and seeing what's happening here. And the way this works is we will deploy the DocPeak service, which is this here. This is DocPeak itself, right? And then any of the containers, the any of the hosts that we want to uh, see within our list, like here, we will need to put the uh, DocPeak socket proxy onto. I'm going to show you the whole process of this, um, but then you just add it to as many as you want. So it's showing here how we add the multiple hosts if you're getting confused, it's okay. I'm going to show you my setup and how quick and easy it is to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this entire thing down and we're going to start fresh. So my Electron Cloud host is the one that's running the dashboard, which we just seen. So I'm going to have this Docker Compose file. Now, this exact one, I know there's a lot here and it might look confusing. This exact one here is going to be in... Uh, my documentation so you can just copy and paste it so i'm going to just quickly go through this so we've got a service right we've got the docpeak service and i'm going to scroll down just ignore the other stuff for now and then we've also deploying the the socket proxy which is you know exposing the docker socket so we can see the containers so this needs to be deployed on everything regardless and then we have the DocPeak service itself, but this only needs to be deployed on one host because this is the UI, right? The, the main one that we're going to be using the, for the single pane of glass view. So what we're going to have to do is you're going to have to set up for DocPeak a secret key. So change this from my secret key to something else. And then your login credentials, which will be, you know, you want to set a proper username and a proper password. I'm just going to leave these as default for the sake of this video, but make sure to set them as something uh, more secure. And then any other hosts that we want to add, it's so simple. We just add it here. So for Docker host one, uh, that's Electron Cloud, the one that we're looking at, I could put a local IP and stuff here, but I, I, I like to just set it as the actual IP address because everything's using a static IP. So I'm telling DocSeq, hey, look, on this TCP address, on port 2375, and if I come down, 2375 is the DocPeak socket proxy, you will find the Docker socket, right? And the when you connect to that socket, just the, this host is called Electron Cloud, okay? And then for our second host we're going to be added is this TCP address on port 2375 because it's going to be running the proxy, the socket as well. And that one's going to be called Sandbox. And that's why we could see the two because I've told it. And we're going to be connecting to the UI, the DocPeak UI on port 3420. And then we've got a depends on here. So this is saying that, hey, look, the UI can't really start until the proxy is all set up first because we want the proxy running so then the UI can actually connect to it and we can see everything. So the UI won't start until the proxy is all up and running. So we don't really need to change anything. The only thing you need to set is, of course, the secret key, the username, the password, and then set up your Docker host. So these are all pretty much set up, right? Because I've already added all the details. So I'm going to save this here. Before I run it, I need to go over to the other host that I want to be added to Docker Peak, right? So what I need to do is go to that host and make sure it's running the socket. So I've connected to my sandbox server, which is the other one. And with my uh, directories, I always like to have my compose files under Docker, and then they have the folder name for what the service is called, which is Docker Peak, right? Or Doc Peak. And then in here, I just have the compose file. So this compose file, this is just running the socket, right? We don't need to run the UI uh, because the UI is going to be run on the other host. So this is really simple. We can just leave this as is. So I'm going to bring this down because it's actually currently running. And then uh, I will show you the whole process. So once we've got the compose file, we're going to do a docker compose up hyphen D. So this will run our socket proxy in the background. So the container's running and we can close the session and that uh, socket proxy will continue to run. And now what we can do, now that we know all of our hosts are running their socket proxy and you know they'll be able, we'll be able to connect to them, 
we can now start up our main one. So docker compose up hyphen D. And I'm going to hit enter. And so what this has done is we can see that, okay, we've set up the socket proxy on our main host as well, but we've also set up the doc peak uh, container itself. So we can actually see the UI. So coming back here, of course, I already had it up and running and you can see here I've connected to it on uh, port 3420. If I hit refresh, of course, we're, we've logged in again. But what you would see is you would see the login screen and you would enter in your credentials. So remember, mine was just admin admin, but you would use your actual credentials and hit login. And then once you've logged in, if you know the proxy was stood up on your other host correctly and everything was able to talk to each other, you can now talk to you know the sockets on those other hosts and now you can see what's running. That's actually pretty straightforward and simple. Now the compose and all the documentation, again, you can look at the official GitHub that's gonna be in the description, but I also have my own documentation docs.techdocs.nz where you can go to and you can see the exact compose files I use tweak the details that you want, like with the IP addresses where your uh, hosts are and just a name for them, and you'll be all set up and running as well. So multiple ways to go about it, use the official stuff, create it how you want, or if you just wanna get started quick and easy, you can use uh, the exact same Compose that I've just used in this video as well. But yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you've got any questions, jump to the Discord. We're all there. Uh, any questions, more than happy to help out. And uh, thank you again um, to you know who you are. I won't um, dox your Discord name uh, in the video, but thank you so much for the suggestion as well. It's really cool to hear what everyone's running and all the suggestions that they have um, and what they're using and using you know in your home lab. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.